مجمع الأندلس التعليمي تعلم عصري ملهم بهوية وطنية وقيم إسلامية Good morning dear students and welcome to today's lesson in which we are going to discuss how to write a cover letter. A cover letter is a letter that you enclose with your CV when you are applying for a new job. Today we have got specific objectives. So by the end of this video, you are most kindly expected to be able to Number one, read and analyze a job advertisement and a CV to answer comprehension questions. Two, to read a sample cover letter and answer analytical questions. Number three, plan and draft a cover letter, check it for mistakes and write the final copy. Gentlemen, now Please let's start our mission for today. Dear students, this is our first task for today. This is exercise A on student's book page 78. Read the advertisement below and the CV on page 73 and then answer the questions that follow. So as you can see, this is the advertisement on the left and this is the CV which was on page 73 it is now on the right as you can see now we have got these two questions at the bottom of the advertisement which of the requirements mentioned in the job advertisement has Duncan included in the personal profile paragraph of his CV question 2 do you think that Duncan is suitable for the job why or why not as usual gentlemen at this stage of the video i suppose that you stop it for two minutes to work out the answers then we can check possible answers together please let's have a look at the suggested answers this is a comparison between the job advertisement and duncan's personal profile the job advertisement asks for an outgoing and lively personality. Duncan describes himself as energetic. The job advertisement requires fluency in English and a basic knowledge of at least one other language. Meanwhile, on the other side, Duncan describes himself as a bilingual person. A bilingual person is someone who can speak more than one language next one well should have formal qualification Duncan describes himself as while studying for my degree in tourism so this means that Duncan has got some sort of formal studying the job advertisement says those with previous experience of working as a tour guide will be preferred duncan says i have gained valuable practical experience in organizing tours now we move on to question two do you think that duncan is suitable for the job why or why not of course this is a suggested answer I think that Duncan is suitable for the job because his studies and his work experience match the requirements of the job. Also, he has all the necessary personal qualities and skills needed for the position. Now, gentlemen, I think we have got enough knowledge from this advertisement and the CV. Now we can move on to our following task. Welcome again, gentlemen. This time we are dealing with Duncan's cover letter that is on page 79. Below, we can find exercise B with these two new questions. Read the cover letter on the next page that Duncan sent with his CV and answer the questions below. Question 1. 
which information from his CV does Duncan also mention in the cover letter? Very good answer. And this is a good participation. The answer to question one, he includes his education, his work experience, his knowledge of foreign languages, and the qualities he possesses that are suitable for the job. Amazing participation. Now we move on to question number two. In what way are the cover letter and the personal profile similar? In what way are they different? So you are asked to work out the differences and similarities of the cover letter and the CV. This is a suggested answer. The aim of both the personal profile and the cover letter is to better introduce the applicant to the employer by going beyond the information in the CV. The applicant needs to expand on that information, explain it and provide examples that support his claims. The difference is that the personal profile is just a short paragraph, whereas the cover letter can be a full A4 page. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your hard work and effective participation. Now we are ready to move to a new task. Hello again, dear students. Now we are going on to continue our task for today. This is exercise C on your student's book, page 78. Let's read together. Each of the following sentences corresponds to a paragraph in the cover letter. Write the numbers one to four in the boxes. So in the cover letter, we have got four paragraphs and each paragraph has got a separate topic. We have got four topics which we are asked to match to the paragraphs. In this paragraph, the writer states his qualifications, refers to previous employment and details specific skills he had acquired. That's right. Paragraph 2. Sentence B. The writer expresses his belief that he is capable of filling the position as well as the hope that he will receive a reply. Amazing. This is paragraph 4. Very good participation. Sentence C. The writer states his reason for writing and explains his interest in the position. Very good. This is, of course, paragraph one. Sentence D, the writer refers to the job requirements and other personal qualities he possesses. Nice participation, this is paragraph three. Now, we move to exercise D. Read the statements A to K and tick the ones that apply to the cover letter. Now, gentlemen, if you'd like to stop for two minutes to study the task on your own and then we can continue checking your answers. Now let's start. In this cover letter, the writer knows the person he is writing to. Of course, this is false. Because the writer starts the letter saying, dear sir or madam. So that means he doesn't know them. Sentence B. The writer uses set phrases to begin and end. Good answer. That's right. He starts saying, dear sir or madam, and finishes saying, yours faithfully. That's because he does not know the receiver of the letter. C. The writer mentions where he saw the advertisement. That's right. Of course, he mentions where he saw the advertisement in the first paragraph. Sentence D, the writer uses informal language. Of course, this is wrong. He's writing a formal letter and he uses formal language. Very good participation, gentlemen. Sentence E, the writer provides information about his educational background. That's right. Very good. Sentence F, the writer explains why he is suitable for the job. Good answer. The sentence is correct. Sentence G. 
the writer provides a brief description of his work experience. Amazing. That's right. That's a correct sentence. Sentence H. The writer gives examples of what he did at his previous job. Good answer. The sentence is right. Sentence I. The writer mentions qualities that make him suitable for the job. Very good answer. The sentence is right. Sentence J. The writer provides the correct details of the person he worked for. Hmm. Of course, the sentence is false. Very good answer. Last sentence. The writer, briefly, in short, mentions skills needed for the job that he does not yet possess. Of course, this is a false sentence. This is a very good participation. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, let's continue our lesson. Hello again, gentlemen. As you can see, we are dealing with the plan of a cover letter that is on workbook page 59. In this task, we are trying to provide a short plan of our cover letter. Now we have got three main parts. Opening paragraph, main part, which is two paragraphs, and the closing paragraph. Again, remember, gentlemen, we are just providing short notes, short sentences to resemble the basic information of our cover letter. So let's start checking or discussing our cover letter, which I suppose to be about a senior architect. Our question is, what position are you applying for? A senior architect. Where and when did you see it advertised? Yesterday, in the local newspaper. The main part. What qualifications do you have? This is a suggested answer. A master's degree in architecture. What is your present? Was your previous job? Senior architect? Of course, the previous job is junior architect. What relevant experience do you have? This is a suggested answer. I have worked as an architect for 10 years. I got a new job as a senior architect a year ago. The following question, what relevant abilities or interests do you have? This is a suggestion. I have good computer skills. I can speak several languages fluently. The following question, what personal qualities do you have? This is the sample answer. I can build good work relationships. I can motivate staff and boost creative spirit. And finally, we have got the closing paragraph. Why are you the right person for the job? The sample answer can be, I have all the relevant qualifications as well as the necessary skills for the job. As you can see, gentlemen, I think this is a suitable outline of a cover letter. Please let's move on to write and read our final version, our complete cover letter. Please let's go ahead. Hello gentlemen, this is our actual cover letter which we can write on our workbook page 60. This is a sample first paragraph. Dear sir or madam, I am writing to apply for the post of a senior architect as advertised online at finejob.com. I am interested in this position as it suits my interests and career objectives. As you can see, gentlemen, I have referred to the place where I found, where I read about the job and why I am interested in applying for the job. Now, we can read the following paragraph. Talking about my qualifications and job experience. I got my bachelor's degree in architecture in 2010. Since then, I have worked as an architect for seven years. A year ago, I was given a new position as a senior architect. 
I am presently responsible for supervising the process of creating new designs. At the moment, I am looking for a new job with a new challenge and better career opportunities. Dear students, we move on to the following paragraph, which talks about my personal skills and other abilities. As for languages, I can speak several languages fluently. In addition, I have got excellent computer skills. I have got plenty of creative ideas that would add a lot to the company's success. I can build good work relationships. I am able to motivate staff and boost creative spirit. Gentlemen, now the remaining part of our task is to conclude by writing the final paragraph, which is, I believe that I am the best candidate for the position as I have all necessary qualifications and skills required for the job. I enclose my CV and contact details. I am available for an interview at any time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yours faithfully. This is a suggested name, John Trevor. Dear students, I hope you have found today's lesson really useful and fruitful. I'm really grateful to your participation and hard work, hoping to see you in our following lessons. Thank you very much and goodbye. مجمع الأندلس التعليمي تعلم عصري ملهم بهوية وطنية وقيم إسلامية